Thank you. out here to get clean audio and it's a little bit too windy to fly the Inspire 2 so we're just having a picnic. It's kind of windy out here you can probably hear it in the microphone a little bit. The Inspire 2 flies just fine but if I was getting paid to fly it no problem but to crash it just just messing around and playing with it it's not worth it okay it's been relatively windy here in st louis so i've taken it to the park and flown it around the total cost as it sits right there is four thousand eight hundred and ninety eight dollars so while i would fly in 10 to 15 mile an hour winds for a paid gig I haven't really felt comfortable flying it just for review purposes. I've also borrowed it from someone. It's, I don't wanna crash it just to film a review is what I'm getting at, at almost $5,000. I shot an episode of Agnes eating with it, just sitting on the table here. The camera looks good. It's definitely in 264 mode indistinguishable from the GH4. I wouldn't say it's better quality or worse quality, but without the SSD and the ability to shoot in ProRes or RAW, not really getting like the full capability out of it. Um, what else? Flight characteristics, it flies awesome. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would say it flies better than the Inspire one. It's the same airframe. It has a little bit better computer and processing in there. Uh, it does fly quite a bit faster than the Inspire one or the Phantom or TBS Discovery. The uh, QAV 250 I think is still a little bit faster but you know again with a like 250 quad you really don't care about crashing it because you just put new propellers on and it's fine. Uh, crashing this thing is a little bit more costly. While it's still windy here in St. Louis, I'm gonna take it out and compare it to the S900, which is a hexacopter. So, and it has a little bit more inertial mass. So I'm wondering if this will be smoother in the wind and get blown around less just because it's larger and has a, a larger, uh, it's called disc space on a regular helicopter. I don't know if this thing at almost a meter wide since the rotors are further out and there's two extra rotors, if it'll be more stable and get blown around less than the Inspire 2. Uh, my S900 has the older A2 processor in it. So maybe the telemetry and everything in the Inspire 2 will be able to keep it stable and shooting stable solid footage. Well, I've always noticed that the S900 compared to the old Inspire or the Phantom or anything shoots smoother, uh, looks like a dolly track instead of a drone shot it maintains altitude and, and the inertia helps smooth things out. So we're gonna test that out. Uh, I will say this, the S900 goes in a huge case, really can't go into the middle of the woods or anywhere. The Inspire 2 packs down pretty small into a normal size Pelican, well, not larger than a normal size Pelican case, but is definitely something that's easy to get to the location whether it's you know schlepping it through the wilderness, pulling it out of the back seat of your car, or any of those sorts of things. The S900 has to go either in the back of my pickup truck or the hatchback of a Subaru Outback. 
You can't just fit it in the back seat of a car while it's in its Pelican case. Getting to location may be easier with the Inspire 2. Uh, certainly if you want something really easy to get to location, go with Phantom 3, 4, or even the Mavic. There's obvious compromises with image quality, but getting the shot and having the drone with you may be more important than super high quality raw image files or hire an assistant to carry it. If I had an assistant all the time, I would bring the S900 on, on every shoot and uh, ha have them carry it through the woods. The collision avoidance. I usually fly in such a way that I'm not going to collide into something. Uh, one, of, one of my buddies, the, the guy who owns this drone, he tested it and flew it towards a wall and it starts blinking at you and gets angry and doesn't let you crash it into a wall, so I guess that's good. It has sensors on the top, the bottom, left, right, and forward. Okay, we're out in the field testing the new Inspire 2 versus the old DJI S900. We forgot a memory card, we forgot an extra battery for the uh, GH4, and then we ran out of batteries on the S900, so we completely failed to get the shot. On the other hand, we had the Inspire 2 in the air for over 25 minutes, getting shots of me messing around with the S900, and Surprise, we got the shot. So is it worth the invest is it worth the investment over an S900 or something? Yeah, I say so. I'm giving it two thumbs up and I'm saying it's definitely worth the investment by the Inspire 2, especially with the SSD and ProRes.